Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's show. I hope you all had an awesome day today with this eclipse. It was really interesting to see. So here in the chat I have for now, I got Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Nice to see you. We got Flora. Hello. Nice to see you. I'm glad you guys popped in and decided to spend a little time with me. So I'm just going to wait for a few more people just in case so I don't have to start over all the time. So I'm just going to wait until notifications go out properly and stuff. So it won't be too long, I think. <laughs> so I hope you guys had an awesome day today with that eclipse. That was really interesting to see. I watched it from TV. I didn't go outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I guess we will start slowly but surely. And for tonight, I have 30 stories, but they're like short ones there. They're about, what, two or three sentences long? with the answer. So they're not like a full chapter or whatever you can imagine. <laughs> so I don't know if 30 stories like this will go fast or I don't know. Um, maybe at one point I've been suggested in the last live stream to uh, maybe do like five or six that last about five, uh, 10 minutes each. So I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm going to check this method out and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was funny. But I didn't want to be funny in a way, but it, it came out like that. And, yeah, he did remind me of Batty <laughs> from the behind, <laughs> running everywhere. Hi, Face the Ace. Yeah, he was, uh, because he's, he just started to walk, so he has a lot to explore. And my daughter and her father decided to go to Ikea for some reason. And uh, they let him loose in the store. So he was having a great time. And he was exploring, so... And then I remembered, oh, yeah, Betty loves that store, so... <laughs> Hi, the Bud Files. Thanks for joining. Yeah, so that's what made me laugh, is because Betty always does, like, videos. He's going and shopping at Ikea and stuff, so... <laughs> But he sure is a clown, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I would like to ask for the people that are here right now, have you guys ever heard of this TV show, um, Believe, uh, Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction? Have you ever heard of this show before? This show came out in... 1997, played all the way through 2002, it said on Wikipedia. And uh, no, I'm watching it by a streaming TV that I got here, a streaming. <laughs> so I can see it, but all the series that they've done. Sounds familiar? Okay. Yeah, so no, you haven't. Yeah, I guess it depends uh, what you would watch when you were younger, I guess, or in those days. <laughs> I never was a, really a TV fanatic, but <laughs> yeah, I'm there. Oh, I never saw this show before. Maybe it was playing at the same time as something else. And <laughs> that's why we're, we're not aware of it. <laughs> okay, so... I start off my text here. 
by saying good evening. Here are 30 beyond belief fact or fiction style stories along with their answers inspired by the format of the TV show. So <laughs> wrestling time, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Vodka, hello, sis. Thanks for taking a minute or two for me. Thank you. It's so late where you are. And Florna, too, of course. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start off with the first story. And Joe Axe, hello. Hello, sweetie. Thanks for coming in and say hi. <laughs> For you, too, it's very late, or is it very early, one or two. <laughs> but thank you for taking time for me. <laughs> okay, so here I go with the first story. It's um, The Disappearing Act. A magician performs a trick where he seemingly makes his assistant disappear into the thin air during a live show. Was it a mere illusion or did something supernatural occur? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the, um, so if I say fact, that means true. And if I say fiction, that means it's false. So we can uh, figure it out like that too, if you fact or fiction. So, <laughs> okay, let me just, I did something wrong here. Oops, I lost everything. So my answer to this uh, uh, disappearing act by a magician that makes his assistant disappear is the answer fact. It's a fact, so that means true. Uh, the assistant was indeed an illusionist herself, and they both conspired to create the illusion of her disappearance. It was an illusion. <laughs> They were both illusionists. So, yeah, you're right, Debbie. <laughs> Here's uh, one. It's called The Cursed Painting. Okay. A family inherits a painting that is said to be cursed, bringing misfortune to anyone who possesses it. Can they break the curse before it's too late? So... Like some stories might ring a bell. Oh, she didn't she read that that one before? But it was like another answer for another, for a different kind or whatever. <laughs> so sometimes they might sound familiar, but I overcheck them all, and I've never read them before. Juliet, hello, hello. Thank you for coming. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, so for this one, the uh, I I had the tendency of saying it's true because I remember back in the what late seventies, early eighties. I'll tell you my age about. Uh, there was this painting of a little boy crying that would bring bad luck to houses. They burn down and stuff. So I, when I hear a, a story of a cursed painting like this automatically for me i believe that that is true you know but for this one answer fiction the misfortunes were merely coincidences and the family's belief in the curse ultimately led to their downfall <laughs> Hello, Abandoned Landscapes. Welcome. Nice to see you. So, yeah. So my story with the little boy crying, painting, well, you know, it doesn't match up to this one, I guess. <laughs> so, 
for the next one, the ghostly encounter. A septic spends a night in a supposedly haunted house to prove there are no such things as ghosts. However, strange phenomenon began to occur, making him question his beliefs. So for the answer of this one, would it be a fact or fiction? <laughs> this guy doesn't believe in ghosts, doesn't believe in anything. He goes into a haunted house and he sees all this action going on. <laughs> Yes, Debbie, it's a fact. The septic encounters real paranormal activity, convincing him that ghosts do indeed exist. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, look at this one. I like the title of this story. The, the time-traveling pocket watch. <laughs> A man discovers a pocket watch that allows him to travel through time. He uses it to correct past mistakes, but soon realizes the consequences of altering history. So would this be a fact or a fiction? <laughs> The answer for this one is fiction, of course. <laughs> Good, Debbie. The pocket watch was an elaborate hoax, and the man's supposed time-traveled experience were merely vivid dreams. Hmm. So I like this kind, these kind of stories because they have the answer and they explain into detail. They don't just say true or false. Guess why, <laughs> you know? So I like it like this, though, in this format. You have a little short story, then the answer. So it's pretty fun. So here's a similar thing, the vanishing act. Okay, now vanish. It was disappearing, now it's vanished. A woman mysteriously disappears from her locked room without a trace, leaving investigators baffled. Was it foul play or something supernatural? Oh, no, so it's not the same thing, but it, yeah, the lady disappears from her room that is locked. Hmm. Oh, that's okay, Vodka. Thanks for coming in. At least I got to see, see you and say hi and love you and take care and take care of mom. <laughs> see you again soon. The foul play. So, yeah, it's uh, the woman that vanished. Okay, so is it fact or fiction? It says here... Um, yeah, it says foul play or something supernatural. The answer is fact. The woman had mastered the art of ecl eclipsology. I don't know what that is. E Escalapology. Whatever. I can't even say the word. And staged her own disappearance as a publicity stunt. Here's the word that I'm trying to read. Maybe you guys can read it for me or <laughs> I won't hear you guys say it, but <laughs> the lady was mastered this word right here, which definitely proves to you that I didn't master it because I can't even read it. Escapology. Escapology. I don't know what that is. Hi, Adrian. Welcome. So that's the word I can't read. And maybe you guys know 
better than me on this word, but I don't even know what it means. So, <laughs> so the lady practiced a special art to pretend she's disappeared and she's not. So it's like escape then. Oh, okay. So I almost had it right. Escape then ology. Escapology. Escapology. So I guess I had it right the first time. <laughs> okay. The next story is the alien encounter. A group of friends claim to have been abducted by aliens during a camping trip. They recount their horroring experience under hypnosis. But can their stories be believed if they're under hypnosis? So is the answer a fact or fiction? The answer is fiction. <laughs> the friends fabricated the abduction story to gain attention and their memories under hypnosis were implanted by a hypnosis with un untold move movements. Okay. <laughs> So it, it, it's fiction. It, it's, it's not true. So how are you guys doing with the guessing on these? <laughs> got it wrong. Yeah, I would have got it wrong too. Oh, so here we go with a Ouija board again. So it's probably the same subject, but it's in a different way. So <laughs> here's the curse of the Ouija board. A group of teenagers unwittingly summon a malvoyant spirit throughout a Ouija board. Can they break the curse before it consumes them? So most of the time it was like fake, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> you got it wrong too. Yeah, I think that one with the hypnosis one, that, that one was kind of hard, I guess. Uh, so the answer for the Ouija board thing with the teenagers, uh, answer, fact, it's true. This one's true. The teenagers uh, dabbling with the Ouija board opened a portal to the spirit world, unleashing a malvoyant entity that must be stopped before it's too late. So that one was true. We always say it's fiction, but this time it's true for the Ouija board. <laughs> okay. Here's one. The phantom hitchhiker. A driver picks up a hitchhiker who mysteriously vanishes from the car before their eyes. Was it a ghostly apparition or a trick of the mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Debbie says fiction. The answer is fiction. The hitchhiker was a fragment of the driver's imagination brought on by sleep deprivation and stress. Ghost facts. <laughs> the phantom ghost tiger or whatever. <laughs> okay, here we have a dollhouse again like last week. <laughs> but it's not the same story. So don't rely on last week's answers. Sleep deprivation can be dangerous. Yes, it can. It can make you do things you wouldn't imagine doing or <laughs> say. <laughs> You're not doing so good tonight. <laughs> okay, this one. The Haunted Dollhouse. 
a child's doll house becomes the center of strange occurrences with miniature figures moving on their own. Is it the work of spirits or something more sinister? <laughs> more sinister? Probably tied a fish string to them and <laughs> make them move around. <laughs> That's not too sinister. I don't know. Oh, you'll be surprised with the answer. The answer is fact. Hmm? The dollhouse is indeed haunted by the spirits of its previous owners who seek vengeance for past wrongs. My. Oh. Because, you know, it's a dollhouse. I said, well, it's not true. <laughs> but uh, got me. <laughs> oh, look at this one. This one sounds interesting. The mysterious crop circle. Hmm. Interact, interact crop circles appear overnight in a farmer's field sparking rumors of extraterrestrial activity where they created were they created by aliens or something else entirely <laughs> crop circles because I just can't stop and imagine how someone could make a crop circle. <laughs> I don't know. They're smarter than me, that's for sure. Fiction. Uh, the answer is fiction. You were right. <laughs> wow. The answer is fiction. The crop circles were a prank orchestrated by local teenagers using planks and ropes, but their creation uh, attracted genuine UFO sightings. Okay. So the UFOs thought that these were messages for the, <laughs> but they were fake. Oh, okay. Uh, then it says, oh, wow. You know someone that made a crop circle? That is interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next story is the curse of the family heirloom. A family heirloom brings trad tragedy to all who possessed it leading leading members of the family to believe its curse can they break the cycle of misfortune okay so so there's an heirloom they don't say like what it is is it a brooch uh, i don't know a book or <laughs> huh Heirloom brings tragedy to all who possess it. Hmm. Is it. The answer is fact. The family heirloom carries a curse placed upon it generations ago, and only by returning it to its rightful owner can the curse be lifted. Oh, wow. And Debbie, you said fact too. You knew about this story. <laughs> okay. Um, the phantom photographer. Okay. A photograph photographer captures ghostly images on film, seemingly capturing glimpses of the afterlife are the photos authentic 
or the result of clever manipulation and otherwise photoshop clever photoshop yes please like and share <laughs> Yes, well done, Debbie. <laughs> so for this photograph dude uh, taking photos and he takes photos of ghosts, like if you're a paranormal investigator, you can maybe once in a while, not at all the time, but once in a while you can get it, uh, something on a photo. But this photographer, so I guess he's, always taking photos so it's always <laughs> the answer is fiction the photograph staged the photographer sorry <laughs> staged the ghostly images using double exposure and other photographic tricks to uh, diverse the public hmm wow <laughs> So that was fiction. <laughs> the secret room. Okay. A, fa a family discovers a hidden room in their house containing clues to a dark secret buried within their family history. Can they uncover the truth before it's too late? Hmm. Well, that's a weird one. <laughs> that's a fact, you say, for the the hidden room. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, you are right. Abandoned landscape. Got it. <laughs> Answer fact. The secret room reveals long buried secrets that that uh, threaten to tear the family apart, but ultimately led to reconnection and healing. Oh. Well, at least... <laughs> Hmm. Of hidden rooms. <laughs> You've seen too many videos. <laughs> okay, this one. The Curse of the Crystal Skull. That reminds me of a movie. <laughs> the Curse of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> An archaeologist unearths a crystal skull uh, rumored to possess mystical powers. Can they harness its abilities for good or will they fall victim to its curse? Hmm. You knew it had to be true. I've seen secret rooms that people have been finding on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And they find, like, boxes and oh, that is creepy stuff. Indiana Jones movie. That's the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so is this Indiana Jones story true or, well, fact or fiction? The answer is fiction, of course. The, Chris, the crystal skull was a clever forensic created to uh, describe the archaeologists, discourage the archaeologists, leading them on a wild goose chase for mythical treasures. <laughs> so it was like a joke they pulled on the archaeologist dude. Oh, look at this one. This one is the Phantom Train. Hmm. Yeah. Imagine finding a secret room, though. <laughs> like you've been in your house for so many years and years, and you just discover, hey, there was a room there. 
Okay, now we are on to the Phantom Train. Travelers aboard a train rumored to be haunted, only to find themselves trapped on a never-ending journey through the afterlife. Can they find a way to escape before it's too late? Oh my gosh. Wow. The answer is fact. The phantom train is a vessel for lost souls and and only by confronting their deepest fears can the passengers find peace and move on to the afterlife. Wow, yes. Wow. That okay. I don't want to see that train. <laughs> I don't like trains anyway, so <laughs> I should be okay. <laughs> and like I would tell my friend Sean, another reason to hate trains. <laughs> hey, we're gonna suggest this uh story and ask Sean Sean to work it out bigger, longer, a phantom train with travelers. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Too bad he's not here tonight. He's usually here when he's not here tonight. Uh, Phantom Train. Okay. Next one. The living statue. Okay. The living statue. A statue is... No. A statue in a museum seems to come to life when nobody is looking, moving from its pedestal to different locations within the museum. Is it a paranormal phenomenon or an elaborate hoax? <laughs> I'd go crazy. You'd have to bring me to <laughs> a mental ward or something. <laughs> I'd go crazy. <laughs> okay, so for this uh, living statue, a statue in a museum seems to come to life when nobody is looking, moving from its pedestal to different locations within the museum. Is it a paranormal phenomenon or an elaborate hoax? The answer is fiction, fiction, hoax. <laughs> yeah. You guys are good on this one. The Living Statue was a performance art piece orchestrated by a talented mind seeking to entertain museum visitors. Okay. Oh, the time capsule. Now that could be true, you know. It's a time capsule. Everybody's doing that. <laughs> a group of students unearth a time capsule buried decades ago, containing items that seem to predict their future. Is it mere coincidence or evidence of time travel? Okay. Oh, well, I don't know. The answer to this one is fiction. The items in the time capsule were chosen specifically to match events that occurred after its burial, creating the illusion of pro prophecy. <laughs> that is weird. Here's another one. The Whispering Woods. Okay. Travelers get lost in a forest rumored to be haunted by the whispers of the dead. Can they find their way out before becoming permanent residents of this eerie 
of these eerie woods. <laughs> the answer is fact. The whispers in the woods are the voices of restless spirits trapped between worlds, guiding lost travelers to safety or leading them uh, astray. Hmm. So this one's true. Well, I've heard like in the Appalachians, there's uh, these trees that whisper or... Yeah, and that, that came out to be true, so. <laughs> oh, look at this one. The ghost ship. Sailors encounter a ghostly ship adrift at sea, crewed by spectral, spectral figures doomed to roam the oceans for eternity. Can they break the curse that binds the ship to the mortal rain? Hmm. Okay, this is surprising. The answer is a fact. The ghost ship is a vessel for lost souls. Oh, like our train. This one is like the train. So if you don't like the train like me, you can take a ghost ship then. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it says here, answer fact. The ghost ship is a vessel for lost souls. And only by fulfilling their unfinished business can, can the crew find redemption and move on to the afterlife. Wow. <laughs> So okay, I'll take a ghost ship then. <laughs> but I'm not good in water. <laughs> I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I get seasick really easy. <laughs> eclipse here is here. Oh yeah. The eclipse was at your house right now? No. I think I saw your video you did in Eclipse. <laughs> no, don't walk on a plate. I'll come green. <laughs> okay, next story. The alien em implant. Okay. A person discovers a strange implant in their body, <laughs> leading them on a quest to uncover its extraterrestrial origins. Okay. Are they the victim of alien abduction or something more uh, terrestrial? <laughs> so anything that got to do with aliens, I guess it, the answer would be always fiction. <laughs> The implant is a medical device implanted during surgery, but its usually usual appearance leads to the person to believe it's of extraterrestrial or origins. Okay, so it's fiction. Uh, that's my cat. If you hear a meow. That's Mr. Noir, Mr. Black. <laughs> okay. The Phantom Caller. Ooh. A person receives mysterious phone calls from a deceased loved one, leaving them questioning their sanity. Are the calls real or a f figment of their imagination. Hmm, a phantom phone call. <laughs> the answer for this one is fact. <laughs> okay. 
The phone calls are genuine communications from the spirit world, allowing the deceased loved one to deliver a message of closure or warning to the living. That's a fact. You can get a call. Hmm. Okay. The next one, fortune teller's prediction. <laughs> okay. A fortune teller predicts a series of events that come true with alarming accuracy. Okay. Are they gifted with supernatural foresights or merely skilled at reading people? Hmm. Okay. That is strange. A fact, uh, it's uh, answer fiction. The fortune teller used cold reading techniques. Cold reading techniques. Okay. And a suitable cause to make vague predictions, vague predictions that seem accurate in Heinz hindsight but uh unlimited base of chance okay <laughs> so it's uh, a chance <laughs> the unbreakable the unbreakable curse a family is cursed by an ancient artifact causing tragedy to befall them generation after generation. Can they break the curse through an act of selflessness? But it says it's unbreakable, so you, I guess not. Okay, the answer, fact... <laughs> The curse can only be broken by a selfless act of sacrifice, demonstrating that true love and compassion are more powerful than any curse. But it says it's, it's a fact. It's true. <laughs> Weird. The ghostly guardian. Okay. A guardian spirit protects a family from harm, unseen yet ever present in times of danger. Is it a guardian angel or a fragment of their imagination? Oh. Because they call it the ghostly guardian. Then a guardian spirit protects a family from harm. Hmm. The answer is fact. The guardian spirit is a benevolent entity assigned to watch over the family, intervening in times of crisis to ensure their safety and well-being. Wow. You knew that, Florna? <laughs> Debbie got it right. <laughs> Uh-oh, here's another alien abduction. A person claims to have been abducted by aliens and subject to otherworldly experiments. Is their story a genuine encounter or a fabrication? 
you got wrong. <laughs> so we know for this one, the answer is fiction. The person's abduction experience is revealed to be a vivid dream brought on by stress and anxiety, but their belief in its reality leads to lasting trauma. Oh. So, yeah, you can dream about it and you swear it's real. Yeah. And these poor people, when they, they dream about that, oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, this one. The Demon Dollhouse. Wow. Where are we going with this? <laughs> a child's dollhouse becomes a conduit for demonic forces. Wrecking Hovix on anyone hoax. Oh, reckoning hoax on anyone who dares to play with it. Can they banish the evil spirits before it's too late? Okay, so if you play with this dollhouse, they'll put a hoax on you. Uh -uh. Oh my god, guys. The answer, fact. The dollhouse is possessed by malvoyant entities seeking to possess the souls of those who interact with it, requiring a ritual of exorcism to cleanse it off. It off. Of evil. Sorry, off. Wow. That's a fact. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Slim. Welcome. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, okay, so that was the dollhouse. That was true for the dollhouse. <laughs> the curse of the music box. A music box passed down through generations brings both joy and tragedy to those who possess it. Can they unreveal its dark secrets before it's too late? So do you guys think this uh, music box that's been handed down to ge from generation to generation? A fact or a fiction? <laughs> You are right, Debbie. <laughs> the answer is fact. The music box is cursed by a vengeful spirit seeking redemption for past wrongs, but only by confronting the spirit's uh, great griefness can the curse be lifted. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so that one was a fact. Next one. The Phantom Watcher. Oh, a lot of people got those <laughs> here on YouTube. Anyways, <laughs> Phantom Watchers, they watch your video. They don't put a like. They don't put a comment. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> the Phantom Watcher. Uh a person feels as though they're okay. Blah, blah, blah. A person feels as though they're being watched by an unseen presence, leading them to believe they're being haunted. Is it a ghostly apparition or a trick of the mind? For the Phantom Watchers, it's a fact on YouTube and fiction in life. <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, the answer is fiction. The person's feelings of being watched are revealed to be a symptom of paranoia brought on by stress and illusions 
with no evidence of supernatural activity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. For tonight, anyways. Well, for, like, that train? How did they call that train? And that ship, the ghost ship? Like, come on, that was really surprising there. <laughs> hey, Sean. We were talking about you earlier because we're going to suggest you, me in the chat, we're going to suggest you a, a train story. Let me go up and find it. I don't think it's that far. Uh, 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 and you'd be surprised. Uh, where did it go? <laughs> Just talk among yourselves while I try and find that... Uh, a train story because it's really worth it. Let me go back up. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh, here. This is a story for you, Sean. And I'd like you to work at it more and explain more or whatever. <laughs> Do something with this, please. We really, we were all so surprised. It's called The Phantom Train. Travelers aboard a train rumored to be haunted, only to find themselves trapped on a never-ending journey through the afterlife. Can they find a way to escape before it's too late? <laughs> So that's this is phantom train story. <laughs> and the answer to, like, if this is a fact or fiction story, well, the answer is a fact. The phantom train is a vessel for lost souls. And only by confronting their deepest fears can the passengers find peace and move on to the afterlife. Now that is a cool train story for you. If you can work at it more and make it longer, you know, not just a little short thing here. <laughs> okay, we did that one. We did that one. We did that one. Um, okay, uh, we did that one. I'm just trying to find where we left off now. <laughs> Uh, Phantom Watcher. Oh, okay. Okay, the Phantom Watcher. We did that one. And now we are on to the curse of the lottery ticket. <laughs> wow. A person wins the lottery, but soon finds themselves plagued by misfortune. Is their luck true is their luck truly cursed or merely a result of poor decision making? <laughs> Sounds like a Twilight Zone <laughs> episode, the Phantom Train. <laughs> but they say it's true. <laughs> but this one, the curse of the lottery ticket. Wow. A person wins the lottery but soon finds themselves plagued by misfortune. Is their luck truly cursed or merely a result of poor decisions and poor decision makings? I say it's poor decision makings because I'd be one of the first ones to do that. <laughs> I go crazy. And the answer is fiction. The person's misfortunes are the result of reckless spending and irresponsible behavior with no supernatural influence at play. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'll just stretch it out some more. <laughs> yeah, so reckless spending. And that I know that I'd be one of the first ones doing that. <laughs> okay, the oh, the parallel universe. Okay, a person stumbles into a parallel universe where everything seems familiar yet uh, subtly different. Can they find their way back to their own reality before it's too late? Now, how are you supposed to stumble upon <laughs> into stumble into a parallel universe? Mm -hmm. That is weird. The answer, what? No way. The answer for this one is fact. The parallel universe is a real phenomenon created by a rift in the space time connection. And the person must find a way to repair the rift and return home. Okay. Uh, I thought this was like a movie or something. <laughs> but it's for true. Wow. And that was our last story, guys. So 30 stories brought me to 56 minutes and 56 seconds. Not so bad. Hmm. So, yeah, and then at the end of this, I wrote, uh, what did I write here? Okay, this was 30 Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction Stories inspired by the format of Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction TV show from the, nine, from the 90s with answers. So... <laughs> Wow, we said wow a lot tonight, though, with these stories. I'm sure. <laughs> so, I guess we made it through the hour, well, to the hour at least, not just half an hour. <laughs> so, that wasn't too bad. So, I guess our 30 stories is pretty good to last an hour or so. Uh, we'll try it again next week, just in case. <laughs> yeah, the last one was crazy. And the uh, ghost ship and the phantom train. Wow. <laughs> Please. <laughs> now, that was creepy to say that they can be true. Oh, and there was a dollhouse, too. A demon dollhouse that if you played with it, you need an exorcist after. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> I guess you have to be careful out there, guys, when you go uh, uh, antique shopping and uh, whatever, hand-me-down shopping. <laughs> yeah, just be careful. You never know what you'll stumble upon. You've heard of chairs being haunted, too? I've heard of a chair just yesterday. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't go into detail in this story. I don't know much of it. It was the chair that belonged to Napoleon. And if you sit in it, Something happened to Napoleon in Water, Waterville or Water Hill, something like that. I don't know. So I wanted to look into that story, and the the person was showing the chair and everything. So it's supposedly you sit in it, and you get bad luck or something like that. It's haunted, and while I, it's because my mind was at a different place at the same time, I was looking at this information 
I kept on, my mind was keeping going back to when they crowned the king, <laughs> uh, King Charles. When they crowned him in the back, there was, on of his chair, there was like graffiti. And you saw the graffiti, there was like a, I think it was, I'm not sure. It was 666 number and like a penta pentacle star, whatever, something representing a evil. <laughs> so you saw that as they're putting the crown on his head, the, the back of the chair goes higher than him. And you saw like graffiti scratch marks and stuff. So... I was thinking of that while reading at the same time about Napoleon's chair. So sorry. <laughs> Waterloo. That's it. Remember that chair. If you sit in it, you die. Waterloo. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. So that's where he died, I guess. Napoleon then died at Waterloo. Okay, so... <laughs> I did a series on haunted objects, and I talked about the chair. Could be. I don't know. But this one was strange. It looked like a house <laughs> or something, like the back. So I don't know. <laughs> so I guess that'll be it for this week. Next week, we'll see if we can find even more wow factors <laughs> i'm going to change the title to wow factor stories <laughs> so yeah if you like this uh, live stream please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing for more fun live streams like this and i'll see you all around the room somewhere and i love you all very much Mwah. Good night and take care. See you all again soon.